I think a really interesting one was the rise of uh, Walmart, because Walmart was the first brick and mortar concern to use computation to model a part of its business in order to gain supremacy. And what they did in, in their case, they modeled their supply chain so that they gradually gathered enough data and had enough of a persistent model of what's going on that they could predict the ultimate positions of people they were negotiating within their supply chain to their own advantage. So they, so they turned information supremacy into what was almost like central planning as opposed to the traditional idea of a market where each participant has relative ignorance of what the other participants know and they all have to kind of place bets. Do you all remember uh, uh, at some point in, edu in your education, somebody made you guess the number of jelly beans in a jar, right? Do you remember that day? <laughs> it might have been on the first day of an MBA program or the business course you were forced to take if you're a computer science major or something like that. And so <laughs> everybody has to guess. So what happens is, as you all know, you get a bunch of people to guess the number of beans in the jar, and somehow the aggregate is better than the individual guesses because it captures something of the shared values and tends to cancel out some of the shared misimpressions, and you end up with a better number. It's a wonderful thing. It's one of the main reasons that we like markets, right? Um, but the thing is, <laughs> if everybody doesn't have individual information positions and doesn't have relative ignorance of each other's ideas, it doesn't work anymore. And so, and that's why we don't like central plan, centrally planned communist economies, right? Because they might seem kind of magical at first for the people who are doing them, but then they totally fall apart because they don't take advantage of any cumulative intelligence. Everybody with me on this? And this has been proven historically enough times that we don't have to state it as a hypothesis. I, th I think we can call it a result. So what happened in Amazon's case is that it said, you know what, we're not going to have all these people in the supply chain guessing how many beans are in the jar. We're just going to model the jar. We're going to model the students. We're going to just take control of this thing, and we're going to own the damn jar. <laughs> and you know what? I actually, uh, in that case, and, and I think this will be true for many cases that I bring up, I think the initial results of somebody gaining mastery over some aspect of our world with computation can actually be rather positive, because for the most part, most people are well-intentioned. So in Amazon's case, and this might be a controversial thing to say right now, but uh, I'm old enough to remember that one of the greatest fears we had was a violent confrontation with a rising China. And basically, instead, we let them sell us a ton of stuff and get rich. And a lot of that was fueled by Amazon creating this extremely efficient sales channel. They were responsible for something like 15% of Chinese exports during their main boom in, uh, as, uh, when they rose, and they brought, you know, enormous numbers of people out of poverty and created a population that probably doesn't have taste, a taste for a major war. You know, not too, not too bad. So I don't view this as some terrible thing that happened. And yet, I also don't think it's a sustainable pattern. I think once in a while a centrally planned thing can go very well, but in the long term, it's not what you want. In the long term, you want a real market with many, many information positions.